Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar titled Examining New Research Capabilities and Technology for Preclinical Telemetry in Rodents. My name is Nick Glover from Inside Scientific, and I'll be your host for today's event. Today's session is the fourth installment in our Biotelemetry for the Life Sciences webinar series. We are happy to share that since beginning the program, over 400 scientists from all over the world have registered to participate in this web series. A warm welcome to those of you who are online today. Thank you for being with us. Our session today is sponsored by Indus Instruments, and we are joined by Graham Sattler, Product Development Manager at Indus Instruments, and Dr. Anil Reddy, Assistant Professor in Medicine and Cardiovascular Sciences at Baylor College of Medicine. And the application focus for today's event is preclinical telemetry in rodents. Specifically, we will demonstrate how the mouse monitor telemetry system addresses common challenges associated with this application space. Hi, everyone, and thanks for your introduction, Nick. Uh, welcome, everyone, to today's webinar. My name is Graham Sattler. I'm the Product Development Manager at Indus Instruments, and I'm responsible for collecting and organizing the feedback that we get from researchers and communicating uh, development priorities to our engineering team to make sure that that team at Indus Instruments is solving the problems that researchers are experiencing in the field. I'd like to introduce all of you today to someone I've had the privilege of working with for the past few years and the lead speaker for today's webinar, Dr. Anil Reddy. Dr. Reddy is an assistant professor of medicine, cardiovascular sciences, at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas. Dr. Reddy has published many papers while at Baylor College of Medicine over the past 18 years and is an expert in the area of cardiovascular physiology. At Indus, we have had the privilege of collaborating with Dr. Reddy on a number of different research projects and NIH SBIR research grants these past 18 years. Dr. Reddy was involved in the development of the Mouse Monitor Telemetry Wireless Monitoring System and the related Mouse Monitor Rhythm System that adds ambulatory cardiac pacing, giving him a unique perspective on the capabilities of these systems. Thanks for agreeing to take time out of your busy schedule to join us today, Dr. Reddy. I'll hand things over to you so that you can get things started. Thank you, Nick, uh, and thank you, Graham, for your nice introduction. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar presentation. I'll start my uh, presentation with a brief look into the history of telemetry usage in rodents. Um, the first use of rodent telemetry uh, was reported in uh, a publication about five decades ago, back in uh, 1964. And for about three decades since, there was only a modest growth uh, in telemetry use in rodents, uh, as shown by these blue bars. Um, and uh, However, in the last 15 years, uh, telemetry use in rodents grew significantly, as reflected in the astronomical growth in the number of publications uh, reporting their use, uh, as shown by the red bars. Uh, we can see that publications reporting telemetry use in mice has grown by 1,100%, about 400% uh, in rats, and about similar percentage in guinea pigs and a modest increase in rabbits. Uh, despite this growth in telemetry uses, uses, challenges still exist with the current telemetry systems. And some applications are not suited for telemetry uh, at this uh, point. So some of these applications uh, that are shown here uh, are not suited uh, for telemetry. For example, it is difficult to monitor or record from animals that are in a metal cage or a box. Uh, this is used in uh, metabolic uh, studies. Uh, and in other studies such as uh, in a maze, which is used in learning and memory studies, on a rotor rod, which is used in the studies of balance and uh, motor development skills, uh, on a treadmill, which is used in exercise studies, on a spinning wheel, which is used for running activity in confined spaces, and in a water challenge used in locomotion or behavioral studies, or in combination with a maze for learning and memory studies as well. And the problems associated with uh, this, uh, these applications is the inability to place the telemetry receiver in the experimental zone, um, 
inability to communicate or collect data due to distance or obstructions. For example, obstructions that are on a road or road. So if the mice are in between, communications could be a problem. And inaccurate recordings due to implant crosstalk if multiple mice are being used. And it is these type of applications that our system is designed to work with. Uh, let's review some of the challenges facing cur uh, current researchers with the existing uh, telemetry systems. Here is a list of some of the challenges uh, that uh, we're going to talk about. Unable to collect long-term data due to finite battery life. Uh, power management has to be done manually. Uh, animals have to be housed singly. Uh, charging and communication design uh, requires wide spacing and shielding, and all these result in poor system scaling for larger studies. We'll look at each of these challenges and see how we have addressed these issues. Challenge one is about the long-term data collection. The system requires uh, a continuous PC operation, and the long-term data collection is limited by imprint battery life. And uh, the entire thing generates massive quantities of data that need to be screened and analyzed. Uh, what in, uh, we did in our mouse monitoring telemetry system is we address the problem of short battery life that only allows for two to four months of uh, meaningful usage with an onboard battery that can be wirelessly recharged to enhance long-term data collection capability. Our system does not require PC to be on during data collection. And since we added a one gigabyte flash memory to the implant, this allows for powerful and efficient uh, scheduling options to record and control the amount of data generated. Our next, uh, our next challenge is the limited ability to manage power due to short battery life. Typically, uh, the existing systems have two to six months of battery life. That is, if depending on the amount of data collected and the type of data collected. Uh, this requires manual power switching uh, to conserve power. The implants do not have low power consumption modes, and the systems have limited ability to schedule data collection. In our telemetry system, we incorporated uh, flexible recording schedules, uh, and along with the low power mode and power optimization, which was made possible with ultra-low power electronics. Again, uh, the ability to wirelessly charge the onboard battery ensures longer battery life, which along with the above capabilities, augments and enhances the power management options. Our third challenge is that uh, the animals have to be housed singly. It is well known that uh, solitarily housed rodents have elevated levels of uh, corticosterone experience higher stress, and in their long term, uh, their immune systems are altered if they are uh, isolated. Uh, we took care of this problem by using uniquely coded implants, which means more than one animal can be placed in single cage. Uh, also, the charging of the implant battery works on grouped animals at the same time, so that what, this, what does this all mean? The result is there's, there's no communication crosstalk or interference or the need for met metallic barriers. Uh, this means that multiple animals can be housed per cage, a better surgical outcome, and better quality of data in the long run. The fourth challenge is the need for large space. And uh, since each of the implant needs a separate communication base, and now many institutions have this problem of space. Uh, you know, some larger institutes may not have this problem, but smaller institutes do have this. So it becomes an issue when, uh, um, when metallic barriers are necessary or spacing is necessary or singly housing animals. 
uh, to, pre and to, to prevent noise and crosstalk, and this results in multiple layers of hardware. We made this very simple in our telemetry system. The setup is easy with one communication module attached to the PC, and, it, and the communication module can communicate with 100 implants at the same time. This is possible because of the unique digital ID code assigned to each implant. Here is a picture of an eight implant system installed on a custom mobile card, about 18 inches by 48 inches by 54 inches. Uh, there are two mice, implanted mice in each of these cages. There are four cages on this. And you can see that you can put more cages with more mice. Obviously, you can put up to three mice per cage, uh, and so uh, this means that, that uh, there is uh, there is uh, in the uh, communication module can communicate with multiple implants at the same time. As I had mentioned before, wireless charging works with these multiple animals per cage. Uh, implants in animals in several cages placed within half a meter of one charger can be charged at, at the same time. So in summary, these were the challenges that I had listed earlier that we need to find solutions. And here are the respective solutions needed. We need for long-term uh, data collection. Uh, we need rechargeable batteries and perhaps onboard memory as well. Uh, we need to improve power management, which means uh, uh, flexibility of uh, recording schedules and uh, low power mode operation. Solitary animal housing, we solve that by using uh, unique IDs and then using new approaches to data acquisition. And uh, uh, communication and charging technologies that allow animals to be socially housed. The following measurements that are standard in many studies uh, can be monitored and recording with our telemetry system. They are basic core body temperature, uh, um, activity, continuous periodic ECG waveforms, and heart rate. And all these measurements are made using high resolution sensors with low noise implementation uh, using purpose-built uh, electronics. So the quality of data is really good. Uh, and uh, we will have uh, more applications available on this platform in 2016. Uh, next uh, is I'll present a system overview, uh, just the setup and things like that. Uh, here is, uh, uh, you can see how simple the setup is. It's just a laptop with uh, interface software on it connected to a communication module. Uh, doesn't require much space. And then talking to uh, implanted mouse within 15 feet. Uh, from the communication module. Uh, this means uh, several cages with multiple implanted mice in each cage can talk to the communication module at the same time. And uh, uh, we, there is a wireless charger uh, that is used to charge the implant battery. And this charging doesn't interfere with the communication between the module and the implant. Uh, the wireless charging, this part of it, is independent of the communication module and the implant uh, battery uh, and the charger uh, can be placed in the vicinity. Um, this, so uh, this can be placed closer to the cages when the cages are taken away from the communication module. And uh, the chargers work with multiple animals per cage. Again, there is no issue there about that uh, charging. And so you can have multiple cages as long as they are within half a meter of the charger. Or we can use multiple chargers. Uh, the PC configuration software makes it easy to find uh, and study the data because of the unique IDs that each of these have. Um, let, next, I will show how the data is handled on the implant itself. Um, when uh, the uh, when the PC is off, turned off, or PC is restarting, or just the communication module and the PC are 
further away, more than 15 feet away uh, from the uh, from the implant or the mice, implanted mice, or if the mice were in the vivarium, for example, taken to the vivarium, uh, the uh, memory on the one gigabyte memory that's on the implant can store up to two weeks of continuous ECG data, or it can store months of temperature and activity data. And uh, when the animal is brought back closer to the uh, communication module, the data from the memory is transmitted to the PC, uh, and uh, and then the, the memory can be cleared out. Uh, next, uh, we will discuss the configuration software, and this is the important part, which is the one that talks with the hardware. Um, and uh, uh, this is the main user interface. Once you open the software, uh, this is what everybody will see. Uh, it starts out with this page called the implant status page. And uh, this is where all the activity happens. And then there are several menu items that I'll briefly discuss. Uh, the next one is the trend page, which is used to display data that has been collected. And this data can be displayed on the screen completely. And uh, or now, and at this point, the data can be scanned and can be selectively or completely exported for other types of analysis. Uh, implant scheduling page is used to set parameters for monitoring, recording, and management of data. Assign implants page is used to assign an implant for operation or unassign an implant that is explanted. Uh, the explanted device can be sterilized and then reused in an, another animal. On the settings page, the user can enter information about the study, enter the animal ID, perform data backup, restore operations. The buttons on the lower menu are used to get screenshots. Uh, export data, a monitor, a selected implant, and that selection of implant is done by just clicking on it, uh, or start the recording routine for this selected implant. So here are the three items that are in the blue, uh, dotted blue boxes. The top item is the timing. And this is the timing when this software screen, for example, was acquired. And this is the time when the data shown in the software uh, in the window is acquired. And the uh, numeric uh, uh, the display here has heart rate, temperature, and activity, and this corresponds to data presented during the monitoring phase of any given implant. And this is actively updated as the monitoring uh, screen is refreshed. And the bottom panel is the one where all the implants are listed that the communication module can see. And here there are a few listed, but then there is a scroll bar. You can keep on going until you see 100 or however many implants it can see. And this, for each of the implant, there is a name that can be given by the user and the factory unique ID that I was talking about earlier uh, that keeps the implants uh, from interfering with each other. And there are a lot of menu items on here that can be changed, added from the menu bar right here. And gives the user a lot of flexibility uh, uh, one of the key functions of the software is to allow for data acquisition and management. And uh, this has to be done with ease, whether it is continuous data or periodic data or a combination of both. So uh, we'll look at some of these examples in the next few slides. Um, this is, uh, let's look at an example of continuous data. Here is a 10-week zoom of continuous data measured from an implanted animal. Uh, note that this data is accessed uh, during the trend page. So earlier I talked about this trend page. 
uh, and this is how the data it's, uh, shows this uh, uh, when zoomed in a 10-week zoom mode. Uh, this view is useful to find trends. Uh, we can find circadian rhythms or other expected or unexpected events or episodes. And uh, this screen, this entire screen was captured with a screen shot option. Again, the data is displayed, can be exported with an export option as well. And uh, so let's zoom in into this data. This is a one minute zoom in a trend data and you can start to see uh, the, the red dots uh, are the temperature. The purple dots are heart rate derived from the ECG waveforms and the yellow dots are the activities. And here is the one minute continuous uh, ECG data. Um, you can see that the heart rate is around 540 beats per minute. So it's some, somewhat in between. Uh, uh, it's not a rest time or the peak activity time. Um, let's uh, zoom in. This, and, and this one minute is shown right here. So let's zoom in further down into a 10 second mode. Again, uh, it's a 10 second uh, zoom in view of the ECG waveform, a continuous ECG waveform, and you can see the periodic uh, uh, the sample points of the uh, temperature, activity, and the heart rate. And here is a one second zoom in view. So you can see that uh, the quality of the ECG data uh, is quite good. Uh, the temperature again, activity, I mean, temperature, ECG, and activity. Next, uh, let's look at uh, an example of some periodic data. Uh, here is an example of a, a periodic data. Uh, the plot is quite, looks quite busy here, uh, but uh, you can see the circadian rhythms. Uh, which are more clear with the ECG removed. Uh, and uh, again, the red dots represent the temperature, purple dots uh, represent uh, the heart rate, and uh, yellow uh, dots represent uh, the activity. We can also look at this in separate plots, and the options are given here. You can stretch, expand, and this will, these uh, operations correspond to the timing changes. Again, we can take screenshots, export this data, or select part of the data by clicking at a certain location. And so let's look at some of the zoom in of some of these data. So this is a zoom in, and uh, this is a 10 second zoom. So the entire range is 10 seconds, and roughly the segment is five seconds. And this particular data was set for periodic recording every five seconds uh, for each five, every five minutes. So the, you get a five second data segment recorded and for five minutes for about a week. And uh, this is done by automatic scheduling. Once we schedule it, start the recording, we didn't have to go and do anything until a week later or whenever you need to. Uh, access the data. You could access the data in between and it will not disturb the operation of the, uh, of the recording. Um, again, you can see the, the temperature, the heart rate, and the activity data on this. And any segment of this data can be chosen again uh, to further zoom in to a one second. Again, you can see the samples of the uh, periodic samples of the temperature, activity, and heart rate. Here, the entire system relies upon this. It's easy to set up and easy to use. Uh, the unique implant IDs make it easy to quickly find the data for a specific animal. Uh, implants automatically charge when they are in the range of charger. You don't have to switch on or switch off. Um, and you can also put this entire system if your uh, space requirements are harder for you. 
then uh, you can put the entire th thing on a lab cart as you have seen earlier for a compact system and you can move it wherever you need to or uh, and take it uh, and also move it from one place to another without disturbing the entire setup. And uh, so the, in, in summary, the, the following are the advantages of the mouse modern te telemetry system. It is designed to enable new applications. Uh, it doesn't require a lot of space. You can put it on a compact space or use one of the cards to make it even more flexible. And it enables long-term data, uh, allows for socially housed uh, subjects or animals. Um, you can put up to three in each and put the cages side by side, no problem there. You can schedule recordings with both continuous and periodic data, and it's very easy to use and set up. So recordings can be scheduled again. Uh, here are some of the downloadable uh, online resources that you can use um, on our website. Uh, we've got an overview flyer, sample IACUC protocol, a quick start guide and sterilization procedure. So feel free to download these and learn more about our system. Uh, if you need additional information, you can look again on the website or contact us, uh, Graham or me, uh, at this uh, at our right, through our emails or call us. And uh, thank you for participating in this webinar. Graham and I will be happy to answer any questions you may have at this point. Thank you. To get things started, uh, our first question from the audience would be, could you please give a little more detail on the options that are available for scheduled recording? I'll go ahead and take that one. This is Graham. Sure. Yeah, please take it away. Okay, great. Uh, I've got the actually configuration software open right in front of me, and uh, there's a number of different sample durations that are available. So this governs the length of the con of the continuous waveform that's being recorded. So you can select one second of ECG or five seconds of ECG, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, four hour, 24 hours, and continuous. And then that just governs how long the active recording is for that waveform. And then you can actually select a periodicity of how often it will repeat. And those options have a lot of overlap with the previously mentioned options, but I'll just go ahead and call out some interesting ones like uh, 15, sec uh, 15 seconds every minute or 5 seconds every minute or, uh, you know, you could record an hour every 24 hours or you could record... Uh, you know, 15 minutes every hour. So this would give you uh, a lot of coverage uh, across different periods of time. If there's specific diurnal events that you're looking to measure happening at certain periods of, of the day, or if you're looking to try to record data that overlaps with uh, some other experiment that happens at a specific time of the day. Uh, I'll also mention that, of course, continuous is an option where you just set it to, to run continuously and it just collects data. Um, and then that can also be triggered on demand. So. Great, great, thank you. Um, moving on to our next question. What ECG sample rate options does this system have? Uh, I can answer that question. Um, we can uh, set this at uh, 512 hertz or uh, 1024 hertz. Those are the two options we have at this point uh, that allows for uh, nice uh, sampling of data. Great. Thank you, Dr. Reddy. And uh, moving on, I am interested in housing my animals in the vivarium and bringing them up to my lab during the day for testing. Would this system work for this application? So, yes, that's actually one of the use cases that we designed for this system. So uh, being able to charge the animals in a certain location 
and then uh, bring them to a different location for testing is one of the use cases that we uh, took really seriously when we were designing the system. And so uh, the battery capacity of the implant can actually last for, like Anil said, two weeks of continuous recording at a location that is far away from the charging station and the communication station. So you're able to power the implant, collect data, and store it internally, uh, you know, basically anywhere, completely separated from technology or computers. So that could be you know, recording in the vivarium as the animal is just housed down there and then brought upstairs to a lab for a number of hours to, to recharge and to pull the data off or to, uh, you know, house it in your satellite facility and then uh, bring those animals to do a test at a collaborating researcher's lab or at a, a disconnected space of your lab where it's not very close to where you have all the, the charging and housing uh, stuff set up. So when the when the device is brought back in, the implants are brought back inside range of the communication module, it actually starts pulling all the data off of those implants and uh, clearing up space on the implant as that data is transferred. So instead of having you know, a fixed amount of capacity on the implant, that capacity is you know, returned to the implant once you transfer the data to the base system. So that's how you can kind of get this situation where you're able to collect a lot of data away from the, the base install with the charging and communication infrastructure, and then uh, kind of pull all the data off, recharge everything, and go back and collect another section of data uh, you know, wherever you're, you're running the experiment in a different location. Great, Grant. That's yeah, a great answer, and I, I feel as though a lot of the researchers online are, are going to be elated with that response. I think that will make everyone's life a lot easier. Um, a lot of the questions coming in have been related to ECG analysis, and, and one in particular is, are there analysis features on the fly in the software, or and you know if, if yes or no, um, can this data be exported for additional analysis outside the program? Uh, I probably, both me and Graham can answer uh, that question. Uh, I'll answer first, uh, yes, uh, there is an option, as you could have seen in the presentation, that uh, we can export the data, selected segment or the entire segment, um, into two formats. We have currently have a, a CSV format where you can export it into Excel and do uh, the analysis there, uh, if you're comfortable with that. We also have a BioPack format uh, that we can export it into and use BioPack software. Uh, and uh, if I'm correct, that comes with the package. Graham will answer that part. Uh, uh, and you can analyze this data to get all the parameters out from the BioPack uh, system. Uh, Graham, if you would like to elaborate on that? Yes, I would. Every system does ship with the BioPack acknowledged software package, and we have uh, created the export routines that are needed to seamlessly interface with the type of data that they are expecting. And so we are able to just sit there and press export on our software and import into the BioPack software, and it has all the right translations made to uh, you know, understand the data rates and understand the sampling frequencies and also the channel assignments. And so that uh, that moving back and forth from our, our software into the BioPack software is very seamless and all of the uh, data analysis routines are stored in the BioPack Acknowledge software. But yes, just the short answer is yes, that uh, BioPack Acknowledge software is included with all of the systems that we sell. Great. Uh, thank you both, Dr. Reddy and Graham. That's yeah, a great answer. We've had a few questions come in about the implant itself. Um, so could you, you know, I, I'm sure it's available in, in the documentation that you posted online, but could you just very quickly, you know, dimensions and just talk very briefly about, you know, the dimensions of the implant itself, you know, how easy or difficult it is going to be to, to surgically implant. Sure, sure, I will, I'll take that question. So the implant is uh, 1.9 cc's in total volume, and so it would require a mouse that's on the larger side. Uh, many, many of our initial installs have been in rats, but we've also done quite a bit of testing in mice. 
the weight of the implant is uh, 2.8 grams. So it's more of the size that ends up being a, a challenging part of the implantation procedure than the weight. The animal seems to be able to handle the weight quite well. Um, and so that's, those are the, the size of the implant. Uh, we have, uh, like I said, uh, new options coming out next year, and that includes uh, new implant form factors as well as new capabilities. And so we're, very, uh, we're looking forward to, to announcing those in the first quarter of next year. Great, and um, you know, so sticking on the on the theme of the implant itself, uh, you know, being involved in, in tele preclinical telemetry, uh, people are often concerned with with heat buildup and things like that in the implant as it is charging. And Graham, could you shed a little bit more light on on if if there is any heat that does build up, how much, and how that is managed on your side? Sure, sure. Uh, we use a method of power transfer that uh, has a high frequency signal. And we're, the amount of power that we're transferring to the, to the implant and actually is surrounding, obviously, the airspace of the mouse is a very small amount of power relative to the uh, normal metabolic functioning of the mouse, the amount of heat that the mouse produces. And so we actually don't see any impact upon the core temperatures of the mouse over time. Uh, obviously, once the, the surgical... Uh, healing process is taken care of. There's obviously an elevated temperature response to the implantation itself, but for the long-term uh, functioning of the system, the, uh, the amount of power that we transfer to the implant is, is not large enough to, to affect the, the normal metabolic functioning or really impact the amount of heat that the mouse generates on its own. Great. And again, I'm sure that uh, all of our attendees will be happy to hear that answer for sure. Um, getting back into you know parameters that are sampled and measured uh, upon using the system, uh, one question is how often is temperature sampled? Uh, the temperature uh, and the, the activity uh, and the heart rate, uh, they are all sampled and reported every six seconds. And the, I've seen uh, in the slides the dots I was referring to. So those are the things that are sampled every six seconds. Yeah, and I can add a little bit of uh, insight into that as well. We're actually uh, in the midst of a, a software update to improve that frequency to once every second, and that will be selectable by the researcher because there's a number of researchers that have contacted us who are interested in a more fine resolution on uh, temperature and activity for the particular studies that they were working on. So that will be coming out in the next uh, month or so. Great. And um, <clears throat> in terms of data quality, uh, so data noise can be an issue uh, with you know live animal studies like this as you're as you're recording as the animal. You know, it goes about its daily business. Uh, what data noise, if any, uh, have you guys seen as the, the rodents are moving around? Why don't you go ahead and take that one, Anil, first? Uh, yeah. Uh, surprisingly, we've seen, we've put animals together uh, that are implanted in the same cage. Uh, in fact, uh, even the ones that have just had surgery with the ones that didn't have surgery, and uh, uh, it's only during that initial phase where they are trying to walk, ambulate, you see a little bit of uh, jittery type of signal, but eventually within uh, 12 hours, the signal starts to clean out, and then we don't see much noise interference uh, from uh, just moving around. And uh, you have seen some of the quality of the signals that uh, have displayed, and that's not just for these slides that we're seeing, we're seeing them across the board in uh, all the animals that we have recorded uh, so far, and also the data that uh, some of our customers have reported to us. So if you can elaborate on that, Graham, have you heard from customers any other issues? No, we haven't, we haven't heard about is uh, noise issues on picking up on the ECG, uh, and I have a theory about it, but uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I think that what happens, we also make a product with, that has externally applied ECG leads, and my theory is that with the internal application of those ECG leads, uh, you know, inside the peritoneal cavity, that you see a lot less movement of the affixed uh, 
sensor lead ends, and so that doesn't affect the uh, the noise that we that we measure uh, is doesn't really get picked up nearly as much as the amount of EMG noise that gets transmitted onto the ECG signal with uh, limb applied ECG. Great. All right. Thank you uh, again. And moving on again, back just a couple more questions about the implant itself. Um, Long-term use of the system, is that based upon refurbishing implants or purchasing new ones? I think that's a very good question, and I think that uh, there's a number of different answers depending upon what the researcher is trying to do. If the answer is that you want to record you know, many months of data in a single animal, the system is definitely designed to leave the implant inside of the animal and to be charged and have the data pulled off and then to, you know, to continue to fill up and, uh, you know, remove the implant from the memory, uh, you know, as needed. And that can be either done, you know, in a home cage scenario where that process happens continuously or it can, be hap it can happen uh, where the animal is away from the home cage, you know, in other places. But the whole time the information collection can be going on while the data is being spooled off and the charging is kind of happening in the background. Uh, so it's designed to do that over the course of a number of months for, uh, you know, steady implantation in a single animal. The system is also designed to be explantable from that animal and to be put, it in, put into a different animal. And the risk of damaging the electrodes is obviously present during any explantation procedure. And depending upon the, the skill of the surgeon will obviously uh, affect the condition of the, the implant and the leads after that surgery. And so uh, we have seen successful uh, removing of devices and implanted into uh, different animals for use and they work great. And that surgical skill is something that comes with practice and time. But we also have a, uh, a refurbishment program to uh, fix the leads because those are really the portions of the device that uh, become damaged during explantation. And so we're able to kind of help users extend the life of their implant without having to, to buy another one. Uh, that's kind of how that is uh, hoping to work. So the, the main focus is not on, uh, you know, trading them in for new devices, but rather uh, reuse with careful explantation or uh, a refurbishment of the leads, which is much less expensive than, than a full device refurbishment. And less expense is uh, always the ideal in, in a researcher's eye, so that's, that's great, especially if, uh, if you know, these devices can be reused and, and used again in long-term studies. Uh, that's great. A few more questions have come in. Uh, the, the question of pressure has come up quite a few times. Um, you guys have highlighted what specific parameters uh, your telemetry system will measure. Um, as pressure has continued to come up, uh, we, we, we should address with the audience, you know, is that something you look to add, whether it is systemic blood pressure, blood pressure or ventricular pressures, is, is that something you guys have considered or, or will look to add in the future? I, I can speak to this one, Anil. Um, yes. One of the things that we've heard a lot of feedback from the uh, conversations that we've had with researchers, whether it's in their lab or at shows, uh, is that this is a parameter that a lot of people want to measure. And I think if you look back at that poll that we had, that definitely rings true with a lot of people, I think it was 77% uh, wanting to, to see pressure measurement in their research. And so it's definitely something that we've heard and definitely something that is, is a high priority for us. Uh, we are you know, trying to evaluate how we grow the system as time moves on, and uh, pressure is definitely high on our list. All right, um, I'm sorry, reading through the, the questions, we have a lot coming in. Um, we will actually choose to close up now, um, if that's fine with everyone. Um, I do want to make a note that all of the question and answer period will be uh, jotted down and recorded, uh, typed out and sent out to all of our attendees. So if you did miss anything, not to worry, we will get this out to all of our uh, registrants. If you missed any of the slides, if you you know if you joined on a little bit late, no problem at all. Uh, the webinar was recorded, but also the slide deck will be available after the presentation as well. 
So um, I'd like to say thank you again to Dr. Reddy and thank you again, Graham. If you have any um, final thoughts or, or words, by all means, please please chime in. But um, again, thank you to our audience. And yes, Dr. Reddy and, and Graham. Yeah, I'd just like to thank everyone for joining us. And uh, like Nick said, we're, we will make sure to follow up with everyone and uh, address all of the questions that were submitted during the Q&A so that uh, people have answers to their questions and can also uh, you know, enjoy the questions and answers for, for our, their colleagues' uh, interests as well. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Nick. Uh, uh, and uh, we are expecting to see uh, publications with our systems uh, pretty soon. Um, and uh, hopefully that will uh, give uh, more information to our uh, listeners and uh, other researchers as well. Thank you very much.